Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Nelson. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 signs that you might be dealing with peripheral neuropathy. The top 10 things I look for to determine if someone is dealing with peripheral neuropathy. If you're dealing with three or more of these, you might certainly have peripheral neuropathy. You should definitely get it checked out by a qualified healthcare provider. If you wanna work with us, cool. If you need someone else you wanna work with, that's absolutely fine, but just please make sure you get it checked out. So let's dive right in. The number one thing I'm looking for to determine if someone's dealing with peripheral neuropathy is numbness. It's probably the most common symptom affecting uh, people who suffer with peripheral neuropathy and other types of neuropathy as well. Um, numbness is primarily an issue with problems of the sensation part of the nerve. The number two set of signs and system, now this is a little bit more of a grouping of things, and these are other sensations that can get messed up when people are dealing with peripheral neuropathy. That could be pins and needles, that could be a thrumming, vibrating sensation, that could be shocking, tingling, burning, um, or even sensations of always being cold. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on in this video. All right, the number three thing I'm looking for is gonna be actually a sign that's that may seem a little counterintuitive at first, and that is that your feet or your hands hurt worse when you're resting. Most people would think that things hurt more while you're using them, while you're aggravating them. And for a lot of musculoskeletal conditions, which we help with, a lot of chronic pain syndromes that we help with, that's exactly true. But the issue that's causing pain is actually a decrease in blood flow and a decrease in nerve function as a result. So when people put their feet up, there's actually decreased blood pressure and there's actually decreased activity of blood at the far end of the body. Again, it's called peripheral neuropathy because it starts at the periphery, the outside, which has, of all the places, kind of the lowest uh, circulation relative to areas that are more central to the body. So then when people rest, when you put your feet up, all of a sudden the blood drains from it just a little bit and then the nerves don't have the nutrients that they need, they don't have the blood sugar that they need um, and so then they start acting out and you end up with symptoms that get worse when you rest, that keep you up when you sleep um, and if you're not sleeping, you're not healing. All right, the fourth thing I'm looking for when evaluating someone for peripheral neuropathy is whether or not they have discoloration, like they're a little blue, like they've been swimming a little too long, only it's their feet, right? It's not their lip turning blue, it's their feet and their hands. And if they're complaining that it's cold all the time, it doesn't matter how warm it is, they can't put on enough socks, big tip off. One of the major things I look for there. All right, the fifth thing that we're looking at is if you have cramps at odd times, again, a lot of times, like similar to with the pains that you might experience when you're resting, cramps when you're resting, cramps at night. These are side effects of some medications, but also a sign of peripheral neuropathy. So if you're getting foot cramps, hand cramps, calf cramps, especially when you're resting or at night, definitely something to get checked out. All right, guys, as you've noticed, the ads are turned off for this video. So what I'm gonna ask of you, please, the only ask I'm going to make is if you'll like and subscribe so YouTube knows to show this video to other people who might be dealing with neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, diabetes, pre-diabetes, something in that vein. There's so much information out there, it's really hard to know what you should do about these sorts of issues. So I want this to get in front of as many people as possible so I can deliver that expert knowledge and help you be able to make your life better from home for as few dollars as possible. Hopefully I never have the privilege of seeing you as a patient because the general knowledge you've learned here empowers you so much that you change your health, you change your life and you get it all back. I really hope that for you with all my heart. Thanks again for watching. Let's get back into it. Alrighty, the sixth thing I'm looking for is if someone tells me they're stepping on a pebble or a small item and it feels like they're getting stabbed in the bottom of the foot, there's just that excessive response to their environment. Walking on the floor hurts. Uh, stepping on little things feels like getting stabbed, feels like there's a needle going through their foot. These are things that my patients tell me all the time as a big tip off. All right, number seven is if the balance is affected. If your balance is affected and you're having trouble um, remaining upright while you're going around corners or you're finding yourself having to reach for something to stabilize or you're getting up um, and, and it just after having rested your balance is really not good. That's something to definitely 
be concerned about and to get it evaluated. But balance is a big thing. So if there's irritation of the motor part of the nerve, balance is gonna be severely affected. Not because you don't have the muscle or you don't have the ability to do it, it's just the brain is not talking to the body correctly because the nerves are irritated and inflamed. All right, in a similar vein is number seven. Number eight is where I look at if there's decreased healing. If there's decreased regeneration, then I know that the autonomic portion of the nerve is inflamed and irritated and no longer connecting brain to body correctly. Healing has slowed down to the point where the skin becomes papery, capillaries become fragile and start bruising very easily, and there's just um, decreased healing and total regeneration in the feet and the hands. Number nine, this is the thing I'm looking for a lot, and this is for yellow crusty nails. And this is a little different than number seven and eight because in this case, it's more about immunity. When the nerves die, the capillaries close, and that means that your immune system, which is housed in the bloodstream, can't reach the ends of your body that are furthest from the heart nearly as well. This means that yeasts and funguses and molds can grow underneath your fingernails and then make their home there. And so the nail gets really thick, really yellow. It might be incomplete. It's something that people like to hide under socks and shoes. So if that's you, time to bring it out into the light. You don't wanna just let that run in the background and just get worse and worse and worse. It's like a coal fire, you don't see the flames, but it's definitely still burning. All right, number 10. This is the biggest one that I look for and one of the biggest tip-offs that someone's dealing with peripheral neuropathy. And these are open sores that will not close. If you have open sores on your feet, like one of our patients did, um, Eddie shares his story right here if you want to go ahead and watch that. He had sores on his feet that didn't close for two years. The man was basically bleeding into his socks while he was walking at work. Couldn't walk more than 100 feet without severe, severe pain that had made him sit down. So if you have these types of things that are not healing, they're not regenerating, the nails are crusty or yucky or something like that, you have altered sensation, loss of balance, it's time to get it checked out. Again, if you only have three of these 10 that I listed, it's serious enough to where you need to go ahead and get it checked out by a professional. All right, next what I'd love to do is hand you a list of the four top supplements that I love to help people get. You can order these on Amazon. We're gonna link them below, so make sure and check those out. You can click on them, you can have them tomorrow if you have next day shipping, it's awesome. So I wanna make sure that things are easy to get. The number one is glutathione with milk thistle. This is like an inflammation mop. It runs around your body, soaks up inflammation. Milk thistle is restorative for the liver. So it's just fantastic. Number two is gonna be arginine. Arginine helps to promote nitric oxide release from your blood vessels, opening them up, promoting blood flow into all of those areas of your body that have been really affected. Number three is gonna be saw palmetto. Now you might have heard of this for guys with their prostate, but it's very anti-inflammatory because it helps to keep your testosterone as testosterone, which is very important. Helps it to not turn into something called dihydrotestosterone, a little misleading on the name, but DHT leads to baldness, leads to growing a mustache. So ladies, if you're growing a mustache, you don't want it, take saw palmetto. You don't have a prostate, don't need it to benefit from saw palmetto. And that also helps with mental clarity, keeping your muscle mass, which is the main place where your body stores sugar after a meal, and also that muscle mass will make sure you can get around and keep doing all the things you love to do. Number four supplement that I like to recommend is something called magnesium malate. Now the different form of magnesium is very important. Magnesium malate, think muscles, all right? There's other forms of magnesium which are beneficial. Magnesium citrate though, be very careful because that one will give you loose stools very quickly. Magnesium malate, however, MM muscles, that one will help you be able to relax. It'll help with the cramps. Uh, the vast majority of Americans are magnesium deficient. So this is gonna be tremendously helpful as far as energy, recovery, having the, the muscles really be willing and able to help you get around. The last thing you wanna do is turn into someone who's sedentary, who's sitting still, who's not getting out, who's not getting moving. There's so much information out there about how bad that is for you. I want you to keep moving and to be able to keep living your life. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'm Dr. Nelson at Advocate Wellness. Please like and subscribe. Send this to someone who you know needs to see this. This has been the top 10 things that tip us off that someone's dealing with peripheral neuropathy and my top four favorite supplements to recommend for overall health and to help with nerve health and regeneration. Sending you guys lots of love. Pierre from Fort Worth, Texas. I'm Dr. Nelson.